Thank you. Please Thank take you your know. seats if you can. We're going to get going here. Uh, this is the Thursday, August, August 8th, 2024 birthday. meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. Welcome, everyone. Hello. The meeting is being held in person and electronically via, via Zoom. Can, is, I assume my microphone's working OK. Yeah, we're good. Um, <clears throat> However, please be patient if there are any technical issues. Uh, members of the public who would like to comment on hearings or other matters may do so in person or virtually. To speak during any of the public comment opportunities, please call 206-337-9723 or toll free 877-853-5247. Enter meeting ID 965-3669-9762. This information is also available on the published agenda in the public notices section of the city website and on the broadcast of this meeting on CTN. CTN can be found on Xfinity Channel 16, AT&T Channel 99, streaming online on YouTube or at a2gov.org slash watch CTN. Okay, so Ms. Thatcher, uh, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Commissioner Fortner. Here. Commissioner Ross. Yeah. Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Calderon. Commissioner Kaplan. You do not have a quorum. Okay, uh, we don't have a quorum this evening. That's quite evident. Um, Summer. We are expecting another commissioner, but even if that commissioner comes, we still won't have a quorum. So we will not be able to um, vote on any uh, any hearings tonight or really do any, any business at all that requires a vote. Um, but there is still other business to take care of, so we will hold this meeting and we will do all the public comment, obviously, because we, this is a, a, a meeting that was noticed. So with that said, let's move on to public comment. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on this agenda. To comment on such other preservation matters, please approach the podium now. Uh, we don't have a podium, but it'll be obvious. Um, uh, or join the meeting using the information displayed on the agenda and the video feed. So let's do that first. Do we have anyone? She's going she's gonna to sit right here and present by this speech. Right, I was just checking to yeah. see if we had anyone on Zoom. No, we didn't. Yeah, great. Um, so, so this is the, the podium now, and, and you have the floor, please. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, before I say anything about the 04th Ward, I just want to wish my husband happy birthday. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> happy birthday. Right here. It's, I'm not usually at a public meeting on his birthday, but I am today. So uh, anyway, I'm Chris Crockett. I'm president of the Old Fourth Ward Association. And uh, this year we had the honor of receiving this wonderful community award from the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. And we're really proud of it. We're proud of it because we're a team in the Old Fourth Ward. Uh, Eileen Tyler, who's sitting right next to me, was instrumental in pulling together our application that went to the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. And she's a veteran of these sorts of endeavors, so <laughs> she made sure everything was fine-tuned. We were sure of our community contributions over the decades, ever since the association was formed in 1984. So we've been working at things for 40 years, not just historic district matters. We love our historic district, we love our historic houses, and we love our Ann Arbor history but also in being part of the whole community and in, in taking, uh, taking part in all sorts of activities to support the community, uh, our relationships with one another, with other neighborhood associations, with the University of Michigan, with the city of Ann Arbor. Uh, we see ourselves as full citizens and we have really uh, enjoyed this, uh, this uh, activity that we've had for all of these decades but we love our historic district, the Old Fourth Ward Historic District, and we were so happy that our community service was recognized by the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. Uh, one of the most important things that they have been doing in the past year is working very hard for a broader program for uh, historic, tra historic tax, tax credits, and uh, many people who own historic properties have 
taken advantage of these tax credits, including people you see here tonight. And uh, so we haven't received the final word, but we know it's a huge program. They're looking for millions of dollars to support the uh, uh, historic res restoration and preservation in Michigan. And we're really happy to be part of that. And uh, so we wanted you to know about this because you're part of this too, being preservationists. So thank you so Great. much. Great, congratulations to you. Really excellent, congrats. Thank you, Chris. Okay, is that the presentation? It's a presentation. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and congrats once again. Yeah. Um, is there other public comment uh, for anyone that's in here for other preservation matters? Excellent. Seeing none, we'll move on from public comment. Uh, and the, uh, the next, uh, you know, I, I actually, I don't think we approved the agenda. I don't know how critical that is, but can we approve the agenda as is, or are there changes? Let's, no the, changes. the agenda is approved. Um, <laughs> and let's continue to unfinished business, and we don't have any. So um, next month, we might have some unfinished business. Uh, and so then next we have hearings, and like I said earlier, we're not going to vote on any hearings, but we do have to do the public comment portion of any hearing. So I'm just going to go kind of one by one, open and close the public comment, um, unless someone would like to say something. So we've got um, hearing F1 is 543 Detroit Street. I, oh, well, let's open the public comment, and I'm seeing we don't have anyone online. No. Hit star nine on your phone if you want to talk. Okay, let's close the public comment for 543 Detroit Street. Now we'll open it up for 302 South Main Street. That's hearing F2, 302 South Main Street. Um, any comment? Great. Let's close it for 302, and, and um, lastly, we'll open it for... 407 South 7th Street. Do we have anyone online for that on the Zoom screen? No. Very good. Okay, so we'll close it for 407 South 7th Street. Dave. Yes. Um, so we will repeat all these public hearings next month. Yeah. When when they are actively. Right. Considered. So yeah, obviously when when we go through all these hearings again, uh, if anyone's listening and wants to comment on any of these items, please join us at the meeting in September. Okay. So let's move on now. Um, we do have an item of new business. Bless you. Um, it is G1, the Old Fourth Ward resurvey, final presentation, and public discussion. So um, who, who is here that's going to be presenting that? Great. So that's Sarah. Wonderful. So uh, come on up to a spot where you can be by a microphone. Yeah. And, um, and we look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi. Uh, my name is Sarah Reyes, and I am an architectural historian um, at Chronicle Heritage in Dexter, Michigan. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about the Old Fourth Ward Historic District Resurvey. Sorry, I'm not sure where to look. <laughs> um, Uh, Chronicle executed a reconnaissance level survey uh, to update the Old Fourth Ward Historic District documentation. The district was last surveyed in 1982 and recorded 130 buildings. The resurvey documented the existing conditions of 364 resources in late October, early November 2023. Each resource was assessed and assigned a status of contributing or non-contributing to the district based on the degree of historic integrity and its construction during the period of significance, which was determined to be from 1824 to 1944. Of the surveyed resources, 324 were recommended as contributing resources. 41 resources were recommended as non-contributing, and of those resources, only eight were constructed during the period of significance uh, because they had uh, significant loss of historic integrity. 
Those resources include 710 East Ann Street, 811 East Ann Street, 1016 East Ann Street, 216 Catherine Street, three, uh, excuse me, 530 North Division Street, 330 East Kingsley Street, 413 East Kingsley Street, and 510 Lawrence Street. The University Reformed Church Harvest Mission Community Church at 1001 East Huron Street has been recommended as individually eligible for listing in the National, Historic, the National Register of Historic Places. It was constructed outside of the district's period of significance, but it rises to the significance required for listing in the National Register based on architecture. Overall, the district includes 322 residential properties, 20 apartment buildings, eight commercial resources, four school buildings, eight churches, and two government buildings. On that last slide, was, what were the purple dots? Was that the non-contributing or? Um, yes, the purple is non-contributing. Yeah. Uh, the resources were distinguished by their type or association and were divided into narrative themes relevant to the Old Fourth Ward, including community and residential development, commerce, education, religion, and government. <coughs> community and residential development narrative was further divided into periods of growth. Initially, resources were constructed sporadically across the land that would eventually make up the district. After the establishment of the ward, the growth followed a pattern, first focused around west and south boundaries of the district, then moving northeastwardly from North Division and East Huron Streets from 1870 to 1920. By 1916, most of the resources were constructed, and as the population grew, many resources were subdivided into apartments, and some buildings that fell into disrepair were replaced. The periods of growth largely coincide with architectural style eras. The district reflects the progressive awareness of builders and homeowners seeking the latest architectural style, fostering a mosaic of styles across the district that resulted from its unique pattern of development. The styles transcend periods of development and can be seen in several periods. Architectural styles include classical revival, colonial revival, Greek revival, Gothic revival, Italianate, Victorian eclectic, uh, Victorian eclectic, Queen Anne, Second Empire, Stick East Lake, Dutch colonial, American Foursquare, bungalow, craftsman, Tudor revival, and Art Deco. Present in every era were simpler homes lacking discernible style or borrowing elements from several styles. In both instances, the resources are regarded as vernacular. Those resources comprise roughly one-sixth of the resources in the district. This is a, example, a small example of the sustained growth period from 1880 to 1902. The table includes build date, address, the contributing, non-contributing status, and the architectural style of the buildings. The map shows the resources constructed during this period, the yellow points um, note resources that are contributing and the purple points as non-contributing resources. This is a partial list of the uh, co commercial properties in the district, their location, and their historical and subsequent uses. The Old Fourth Ward is eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places under Criterion C for architectural significance. The period of significance spans 120 years, which is unusual. The resources embody distinctive characteristics of several architectural types and time periods. The buildings were constructed in a wide range according to the owner's means. The Old Fourth Ward Historic District affords a glimpse at nearly every con constructed uh, excuse me, every style constructed nationally during its period of significance, and the variation within the respective styles showcases the diversity of the people who resided in the district. After surveying, researching, and evaluating the resources, Chronicle developed a list of four recommendations. In addition to, city, to the city's existing historic preservation regulations, Chronicle recommends that transfer of property in the Old Fourth Ward include covenant or similar legally binding document that new owners must sign acknowledging the existing historic district regulations. 
Second, Chronicle recommends the Historic District Commission engage with university planners to review their master plan and to create a dialogue allowing for co consultation <coughs> before action. Part of the dialogue should focus on mitigation measures allowing for a deeper investigation and recordation of historic resources prior to alteration or demolition. The HDC should advocate for regular consultation with university planners, including at minimum an annual review of pending plans. The university should be encouraged to provide the HDC with annual and future funding requests for capital expenditures to assess their impact on historic resources. Chronicle recommends further de developing the history of black residency and influence in the old Fourth Ward Historic District through public presentations, educational programming, and signage. Most importantly, the HDC should continue its advocacy for preservation among the current owners and residents of the old Fourth Ward. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Okay. Do questions and answers. Questions, right? great. I, I'm, I'm happy to, that we have time for that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hands. I wait a minute because I had my hand. So I've just been curious why we never got an answer from. I don't think we ever got an answer, Jill, or you can clarify if otherwise. The areas within the old Fourth Ward Association that are in the. Division Street and the Ann Street districts do not seem to be included in your they study, were not included That's in your which seems like it will skew the value of the findings because those were nominated prior to the old Fourth Ward and have a, I mean, relatively, but they're high prominent structures, and so I, I don't want that to take away from the overall findings, but. That always seemed like a, a sort of a flaw in the um, assignment to to perform this survey. Yeah, when requesting the grant, the SHPO um, recommended that we stick to one district, um, and because of the size of this district, 350 mm -hmm. uh, resources, we were kind of struggling to be able to cover the amount of grant money that we could possibly get, and we did sort of max that out. Um, so it. They're just Hey, Katie's here. Hey. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Sorry, I snuck in late. Um, hi, my name is Katie. I'm the survey coordinator at the Michigan SHPO. Uh, sorry, I snuck in a few minutes late. Um, so we have been trying really hard the last few years to kind of limit survey projects, which seems counterintuitive. But what we have found with our CLG grants is that the timeline is so short that it's really hard to get multiple districts for sure, but also very large projects done in the time that it takes. Because by the time we get through our grant awarding process, the contracting process for whichever CLG we're dealing with, usually the contractor's only left with somewhere between nine and maybe, if we're lucky, 14 or 15 months. And, and that can be really tricky to try to fit in all of the reviews and drafts and all of that. So we've been trying to scale back a little bit. Um, you're always welcome to apply for more CLG grant funding. It's an annual grant round. <laughs> um, but we're trying to make sure that what we're doing is reasonable in the time that we have. So. And we learned from this process that it was really tight. Yeah. I mean, we're not done yet. We're still right. reviewing the drafts. And it's got to be done by September 30th. Yeah. Because that's when our grant period ends. So, so yeah. It yeah. Gets, and we'll get there, and it'll be did, fine. We made a couple of mistakes over the last few years and did a couple of really large projects that really were, they about did us all in. So we're trying to. Well, I just wanted to go on the record yes. with that because yes. I mm -hmm. felt like it was a unfortunate circumstance, I understand, but, but it's only another 10 or 15 more structures, so I don't agree with your conclusion. I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense to me when you're, I mean, if you did that and said, well, we'll do the, the, the Division Street District only, then I'd understand that you don't want to add 300 structures to your survey, but when you're, when you're doing 350 or whatever, adding 10 more doesn't seem like a good excuse to me to not have included them. But keep in mind that it does have to be a whole another report. Right. It has to it be a have different report. It would have to be history. It would have, it, th there's a lot more than just the 10 forms. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, first of all, I was very impressed with the, the, the brief, but I think very effective uh, presentation you gave on the information. Uh, one of the things that I wasn't aware of is now you consider this 
district to be eligible for national register status. Has it not been eligible in the past? It was still. It's still, re so you're yes. just recognizing that it's eligible and yes. sort of publicizing that. Yes, and now. Because it might have been um, overlooked. The requirements <laughs> of being nat listed on the national register in 1982 is much different than today, um, and it requires a lot more background information on it. So just verifying that it's eligible. Is this enough information to begin that process? Or to begin, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a lot more work to, to, to get it listed. The idea behind our what we're trying to do with our survey program and our National Register program is that we're trying to make survey be the foundation of nominations. And so in theory, you should, once you have a completed survey, you should have enough information that it's just a matter of taking what you already have and putting it onto the National Register form. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. Um, <laughs> they have a lot of information okay. in this one, so I think they've got a very, very, very <laughs> strong start. Um, like Jill said, we're still finishing. <laughs> we're not done yet. But, Is it possible, uh, Jill? To, to, to get a, a National Register nomination done? If we got another grant from Katie. Okay. <laughs> we should get we a class, for it. somebody from Eastern to do it. Yeah, we got people They have a whole class that does nominations. Yeah. That's That'd an assignment. <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm, I'm not teaching. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know the problem. <laughs> As I said earlier, we're a team here. And you can tell that. Uh, we, we work together and some of the people who are also part of the team couldn't be here tonight. And I, I believe we're all on board to go for that National Register status. We've been, we have worked very, very hard to maintain and improve our neighborhood, to uh, you know, make it as welcoming as possible, which is pretty hard because we have just about 100% turnover in our population every year because it's mostly student rental. But you know, we we still reach out and we get involved with things with students. But we we do want to protect this beautiful, wonderful neighborhood that we treasure. So please, we want to make that the next step. Is your rec uh, suggestion that we have a pretty good chance of getting national register status? Yeah, if, if someone puts a nomination together, it will it will go through. It's not oh. a matter of it's, it's there. Okay. There is and not then, a question of that. It's just it's just a formality of getting yeah. the. All right. Nomination that, that doesn't change what's regulating the district. No. No. That's, That's just, just, a, it's just honorific. Yeah. 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 It's honorific, and then it also well, and you already have access to tax credits right. and other things. But but yes, it's a, it's an honorary title. But would that then be able to encompass the other two districts that are part of the old fourth ward? What, a national register nomination? Yeah. I mean, you create new boundaries when you make a nomination you that, can say, that doesn't require separate reports, like you're saying you needed to do for this. But if you were doing a National Register nomination, you have to legitimize the boundaries you choose anyway, so you could include a larger area. Well, technically, so. your house is in the Division Street historically. I know, I know, so, but so. I'm saying that we, when you're doing a National Register, it's already on the National right. Register, but that right. the it boundaries are just one property. District. But if you were yeah. going to do a National Register nomination for the district, you don't have to follow exactly the old Fourth Ward boundary. You yep. can create a boundary that makes sense. Okay. You may want to limit it to just the boundaries that incorporate those three districts, mm -hmm. or you may want to uh, modify it somewhere. I don't know if it matters. Yeah. It just idea. has to be justifiable, and we don't we don't want we try to discourage folks from like reaching and kind of like pulling in non a bunch. There's a whole line of non-contributing buildings on one block. You know, probably we're going to ask you to draw yeah. that block. Division out of there. Street is not non-contributing. Right, right. But <laughs> just, just as, I'm just saying this is an example. And even Ann yeah, Street just is not non-contributing. Right. So I mean, sense. Division and solid. Ann are those that are. What's the block that's not contributing? No, no, no. I, that She's was just a good thing. I say that we just try to discourage that. One. We don't have one. Um, some, some of the most important buildings are on Division Street. So we definitely want that to be part of what, what is protected. Well, it's just. Well, the protection, again, the protection doesn't come from the National Register. No. The protection comes yeah, from the local district. Local. Yeah. Yeah. The protection, the National Register is strictly an honorary title. Yeah. It's just for. It's just an. It's, but it's another yeah. layer of information that can be used. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I'm a little confused because I thought <laughs> back in 19, early 1980s, when the Old Fourth Ward Historic District was formed, it was inclusive of those other districts. That's the way I sort of read. No, they came. Never first. was. It wasn't. No, no. never was. No. Okay. They've always been separate districts. Yeah. 
Okay. It was not, we just practice as if it was. Well, the reason why it's confusing <laughs> it's is when you look at the boundaries, the boundaries definitely include those other historic districts. So when you talk about, the, there's a lot of confusion here. Can you put slide one up? It is so yeah. tiny, hard to see. See it. that white so the line, white spots. That are, white spot there. Yeah. We assume it's all one district, but it's not. I mean that. I mean I know this was. It's a, a valid situation. assumption. Yeah, we act as if it's one district, but we just label it differently on right. reports and things. Yeah. Why is that little white spot on Main Street? It's in a it's different. It's part district. of another district. Oh, three seventeen. Yeah. I have another question. Um, I noticed it's kind of a new idea for me. When people buy a house, they will have to sign a paper saying they recognize they're in a historic district. Has that happened before? Or is it's that happened new? elsewhere. I already went over that with the city attorney's office, and it's, it, it's, it can't happen here. It can't happen here? Nope. Why not? Because the city attorneys say it can't. And? I'm not a city attorney. <laughs> the next city attorney will maybe change their mind? Maybe. <laughs> so who's doing, what city's doing that? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there are cities in Michigan doing no. that or not. I'm what? not aware of any in Michigan that do. Okay. Well, what's the problem with it? Signing a recognition. I mean, in theory, when someone does a title sh title search, it should pop up that they're in a, but, but we all and know that And it's marked on the assessor. Right, it doesn't always happen that way. But I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure if, I don't think Detroit does. I don't no, think. We, we don't. Uh, no, it would be so. very unusual, but I think it's a great idea because that's one of the things we've always tried to get realtors to do mm -hmm. was to tell people they're going right. into a historic district. This right. is what it means when you buy this house. And they don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess the city attorney agrees with the realtors, not with the preservationists. Most of the time when I get calls from people trying to buy houses, they know that. Their realtors are sharing that information. Are they? they found it out on a deeds search mm -hmm. or something. It's probably been a good 12 or 15 years since I've had somebody call me up and say, I didn't know my house was in a historic district. Oh. They don't always know the rules of the historic yeah. district, but, okay. but that's well, that's it's been a long time since somebody didn't flat yeah. didn't know. Is it possible yeah. to get a written response from the city attorney about why it's objectionable? I, I think... You know, it, you might in a few years if you <laughs> ask now. Well, I will <laughs> ask. It's not a, I may not even a speak about it. High it just priority. Seems if you have a, and that just bad. If you could go back to the recommendation slide, please. At the beginning or was that? At the okay. end. Okay. So for yeah, let's just it. go right down the list. The first one, the recommendation of this report is to adopt a covenant or a similar legal binding document for new owners. So that's a recommendation. What legal weight does that have? I mean, wh where does it? Where do we go with that recommendation? That sort of implies so that we have to adopt the covenant. How does one adopt the covenant? Jeff, I'm saying that I already checked that out from the draft report and was told no by the city attorney's office, so it won't be a recommendation in the final report. Ah. So I guess what will, so this is not the final report. No, no, this is based on the drafts. Okay. Um, and Wait. I am actively editing things with another member of their team that's working on this, that Sarah doesn't necessarily have access to exactly where we are in the editing process. Mm -hmm. And there have been a few changes that are pretty significant in the report. This was one of the things that came out. So um, are all four of these recommendations not in final form? Or is any one of these correct. recommendations? I think the other three will make it in, but, um, but, but what it says in the report is probably going to be slightly different than that. I don't know. And well, there the recommendations more... that happen in a report like this are just strictly recommendations. They're sure. a professional, consul professional pre preservation consultant's recommendations based on their experience, based on what they've learned about the district. Doesn't necessarily mean that the city is obligated to act on them. It doesn't really mean it's just a, it's a straight recommendation of hey, we think this is a good idea. That's and, I, and I understand that you got to understand that we are old, we are historic preservation advocates. So I mean, we'll take the recommendation, say this is a good idea. But when we, we talked about status, you know, of uh, you know, national status. We've taken that as one of our things that we want to do. So the question is, take, and we're looking at this document as what are our next steps as advocates for historic preservation? And mm -hmm. This is what we need to work with you to try to figure out what's realistic. So mm -hmm. that's what we we're sort of uh, uh, hoping for. So, Jill, uh, when do you anticipate 
the final, this will be finalized. This will be finalized. Before September 30th. Before September 30th, <laughs> for sure. Okay. So the service company had a lot of, tur like they had a lot of staff changes right shortly after we started this project and it was out, completely out of their control and, and it really, like it, it changed the timeline quite significantly. So we are, we are way behind what we anticipated being in terms of our schedule, um, but they are doing a great job of kind of finishing things up and taking it all the way to the finish line. It's just been a, it's been a little bit of a rough road because they had a lot of changes happen on their end. Um, and so we're just trying to finish up. So, so Adley, are you, um, you were aware, I think, but I don't know if Katie is, and you probably aren't, but Susan and I have been contacted pretty regularly by the university planners when they plan on tearing down buildings in the old fourth ward and elsewhere that have, you know, start buildings. Mm -hmm. And then, so we, we're, the good thing is that we're usually aware of it. We're not going to change their mind. They usually let us in for, you know, half a day, mm -hmm. and then we have been documenting it. We haven't been, been a little lax on writing up the reports because we know no one's looking at them. So I guess I'm questioning that second one and whether or not you have to consult with the university before you're going to be allowed to put that in there as a recommendation because they have no intention of taking into account whether it's a historic district or not. Yes. Correct. Uh, I, I'm just wondering, are the recommendations for us as the advocates or is it for the HDC to be advocating? Good question. Okay, so we'll a little bit of both. I mean, just so you know, um, as preservationists, um, you know what uh, people that I work with have seen done in other other districts um, across the country, um, and we just thought that these would help um, solidify the old fourth ward and make sure that it's it's preserved. And because I think done. I think that's a great recommendation if it's the HDC that's meeting with uh, some unit like Sugat or somebody like that. Yeah. At, at the university level once a year and you just have, uh, it, it's, it's more, I don't know, mm -hmm. weight bearing or important that it's the HDC and not our neighbor group. Because Which brings we, up the question then, let's ask the HDC tonight, how do you anticipate using this report as the HDC? Do you, do you, <laughs> do you anticipate any yet. usefulness <laughs> for this? Well, um, that's a great question, um, and thank you, Sarah, for presenting today. It was uh, very, I don't know, it was just really interesting to, to hear all the work that you've been doing, uh, you and your team. Um, I mean, we, we use, in particular, like I think probably the most important bit of information is what is contributing and what is not contributing. I mean, that that's like the, the most important first question that you ask on every hearing that we have is what is contributing and what is not. So the fact that we have had someone in front of each house, you know, looking at the home and, and making a professional judgment about what that is, that's extremely helpful mm -hmm. for the commission. That's up to date. It's not. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. so, yes. But would you consider as a body meeting with the university? Okay. To well, that, that that was like a general question, so right. I, I answered it generally. Specifically okay. for that recommendation, I I was um, surprised by that recommendation because, um, well, first of all, we don't do anything right. like that at the moment, and secondly. I, the first thing I thought of was, well, what about all the other developers that are owners in the the, um, the district? Right. Um, the the properties owned by University of Michigan are totally outside the Historic District Commission's right. purview, so it seems like talking to them would be of less value than talking to other developers. So that that just was my uh, initial thought seeing that, and I and I was going to ask you that exact question. So what do you think? So historically, you see the university and the medical campus grow and encroach on the boundaries of the old Fourth Ward specifically. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the northeastern non-contiguous portion of your district, all of the buildings are now gone. Mm -hmm. yeah, there were three houses on Cornwall Street, and mm -hmm. now there are zero yeah. houses on Cornwall Street. But we did and, get, and like I was saying earlier, we did get the call to come in and photograph document them yeah. um, without any hint, no, no constraints on what we looked at or commented on. We haven't done anything. Except we were babysat. <laughs> oh, well, but not, not she followed sits, around. She sits in the, she won't let us be there alone. 
Well, so I, I, I assume that's an insurance thing. <laughs> they don't want you to yeah. get hurt. <laughs> I think we let ourselves out at the end of that. Well, anyway. If I can expand my question a little bit. I, I'm, I'm curious about the HTC, and do you see your role strictly as a regulatory group that deals with reviews, or do you see yourself also as an advocacy group? Uh, I don't know if you've really had that discussion. We have, and we're, we are that regulatory group, but then also um, we're more than that. But I will say that we're first and foremost uh, doing the regulatory portion, and it takes up the time that we kind of feel like we have allotted to things um, in such a way that it's hard to get uh, people together to do other projects. And I think that's where we rely on uh, the citizens of Ann Arbor like yourselves um, who are so um, committed to, to these issues. So um, I think it's, mm -hmm. it seems like, in general, uh, the commissioners are like volunteering to do this work, but it's, uh, our purview is open to more, but it's, it's difficult to do, to find time, I think, to do that work. We, we do an annual, um, an annual meeting where we try to, to do some more stuff that's slightly outside, you know, that is outside of what we do on a monthly basis here. So I have heard that there is regular communication back and forth between the university and the city, sort of through back channels. And I cannot help but feel that maybe the HGC could take advantage of those somehow through planning. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. Um, it's not really back channels, it's just channels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you guys we meet regularly. Yeah, yeah. 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 what's going on. And I, I do, I disagree. I think that the having the Historic District Commission take an approach that promotes preserving the Historic District might have an impact with the planning planners at the university, no matter how small it is, even if it just means they save one house, they do a cutout or they change the driveway so that it saves one of the houses in the district, uh, instead of, oh, just take it down because we're buying the whole property, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that there would be value to that, and my concern is that the message you're getting from city council would say, oh, don't bother because we're going to just bulldoze the, H, the old fourth ward anyway, so who cares? So I think taking an advocacy role would be important. Another way to ask that question too is, the city is currently doing a comprehensive plan. Uh, that is quite uh, inclusive, but does the HCC have a role in the comprehensive planning process? Have you established a role in that process at all? Not that I know of. No. No, okay. No, not a formal role. And the, and the master plan introduction uh, in the last previous master plan mentioned historic preservation in a couple of sentences, and okay. the current one doesn't mention it at all. Well, and we're pretty it does list it once. Yeah, and that's pretty terrible. It, yeah. li it lists the, the, the words once. Sorry? It lists the words historic <laughs> preservation once. Where? In the comprehensive plan. In the intro? Somewhere in there. <laughs> but Let's try to get the, the questions focused okay. here. Just, the it's question. such a great discussion, but there is a time and a place for all these things. So let, let's let's focus had, this on the I had a question the about yeah. um, the eligibility of the Burkert's Church to the National Register. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that a lot of the interior has been destroyed. So that, that doesn't affect that at all. Um, you with, to take that one, Sarah? Yes, thank so, you. So, okay, <laughs> do a survey. This is one of the downsides of doing survey work. We don't, Michigan does not require a surveyor to get into a building. Okay. Um, there are some states that do. We do not. We don't have the ability to do that. Um, so, any individual nomination is going to be pending, it's eligible pending an in, in, interior evaluation, essentially, because a, a building that is eligible. And maybe you could get around it on something like that where it's the exterior architecture that is the most significant, maybe. Uh, but there have been a few cases that I've been involved in the last few years where the exterior of the building was immaculate. It was completely intact, it was beautiful, but the interior had been gutted to the studs and mm -hmm. they did not 
list that building. Okay. Um, so it, it is a concern. Um, it's something that would have to be looked into further before a nomination was done. Um, but that's one of our. <coughs> We, are, we get in this situation where we either don't make a determination of eligibility, where we don't say yes or no, we kind of say, well, maybe, or we just say yes with the information we have today, and then understanding that we're probably going to have to get more, more information to know for sure. Because we, we had that church on a tour yeah. uh, when um, oh. MHPN had their okay. annual meeting here. Or 15 years ago. It was 14 years. Okay, so that church was my assignment. Okay. We all were assigned different churches, and it was, I had been in it before. Yeah. And the current church got it the inside. Okay. And, but the basement was all original. That was classrooms for children. Yeah. And the little uh, lobby that you walk into is that original and has original fixtures. Okay. So, so I was just wondering how that you balance that. Okay. So that's Did they the, remove them or just cover them No, they them just up? covered them no. up. Well, well then there's, there's the potential. They that removed yeah. the pews. Yeah, they removed all the pews. And they removed okay. the floor. So those and are the kinds of things where once you do a nominate, especially for an individual building, you're going to really want to dive in on that kind of stuff. Did yeah. they remove it? Did they just cover it up? Is it still there? Um, no, so that's, I, was, that's, I was horrified to learn that they had taken the pews to the dump. Yeah. So are you going to modify or make a recommendation that changes or modifies the, the boundary of the old fourth ward? No. no. Because, I mean, we've, like you say, we've lost so much on the east side of it. You know, with, next to the church, all the way down to Glen, mm -hmm. and then with the hotel, there's there's a whole swath of buildings. So it's shrinking the the, the con contributing buildings to, but you're not. Won't that change the proportion or value of the district if you don't pull in and say this is what matters? If we go for a national register status, we can eliminate that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And add the division street. I mean, we can make it stronger for that. Yeah. We I'm just can't change it. The, the boundaries here without the city going through. I really, right. really, go really wouldn't. No, no, no. Don't I'm change the boundaries. You, you would have to have a study committee to do that. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Don't, don't have a study committee. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no study committee. Did anything surprise you when you did the report? <laughs> um. I, you, to be honest, I haven't been working in the report for a few months. Oh. Um, but I did. I was out, and I did all the field work, and I did um, lots of the historic context and things. Um, I'm from Ypsilanti. I've spent a lot of time in Ann Arbor. Oh, okay. So I guess um, probably for me, as someone who only has you know six years in the historic preservation field, I was really appreciative of working with more seasoned historic preservationists who said, this is unusual that there's so many different types mm -hmm. and the period of significance spans so far. Okay. Um, that's what I think really makes this district yeah, really yeah. I hadn't heard we it agree. before, so oh. that was new to me. Well, we always say that when we show people around. Well, we show people. We don't say we're an unusual district no, because we spend we, a longer time. But we're the earliest. Us. But we sp we do say that it does have this wide range of architectural styles, yeah, that, yes, and do. that represents different eras yes. of significance. So it is very encompassing, and I think we we've acknowledged that. But maybe I'm I'm glad you are, are appreciating that as well because I think it's unique. It is unique, I guess. So Sarah, a question about the report itself. <coughs> When I looked at what you described, the different examples of different architectural styles, it appears like you listed like one example, you know, as representative of a certain style. But when you did the survey, didn't you survey all the different properties? Yes. Will that be part of your final report? Yes. Okay, that's yes. what, what... This was just supposed to be kind of a snapshot. That's fine. I what It, it was not clear yes. in yes. regards to... Sorry. That, so <laughs> and in regards to the HCC, I know that we're limited on time. Perhaps we can do a follow-up, you know, where we can meet with the HDC. Because I see one thing that's lacking and one thing that's very relevant here in Ann Arbor is there are a lot of blowback about historic districts. And what's missing is sort of uh, a validation for why we have historic districts in the first place. What is the value of historic preservation? That is the advocacy I think we're looking for. And that's something that could be put on your website as sort of an overall statement of historic preservation and the value and the rationale and all that. 
It's just a suggestion, but involves a follow-up conversation. Oh, we there look forward some, to having that. There are some studies about property, like benefits to property values and things. There are some studies. Yeah. The Michigan Historic mm -hmm. Preservation Network did one about, gosh, how, has it been 10 years? Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, there's something called, there's a group called Place Economics that also does yeah. them quite We frequently. have invited them to come here. Yeah. They, part yeah. of the so series of lectures. We, they the can. SHPO has not, Michigan's in kind of a weird place as far as local districts. We have a local districts coordinator. She's preparing to retire in the next few months. So we now have a new person who's taking over kind of slowly. Um, but we haven't had, with the Michigan Historic Preservation Network's staff really kind of going away almost entirely about five years ago, we there really hasn't been any education. Uh, there used to be, I'm sure you all remember that there used to be routine HTC trainings and, uh, yep. and the network did a lot of that because they had the staff and the funding. Mm -hmm. The problem is that that funding went away when we got moved to a different agency. Our previous agency was funding the network. Um, and we haven't had the staff capacity till now, hopefully, to be able to kind of pick up that slack. So we're hoping over the next few years as we have new staff um, and, and we can kind of re-energize things a bit that the public sentiment will change a bit. But it's a, we're in a tricky spot because there's yeah. there's been two communities in the state this year that have completely entirely revoked their ordinances uh, with no warning. So yeah. just... Be careful. <laughs> Where are they? With no warning? Uh, Alleg yeah, Allegan and, well, we knew about one of them. We didn't know about the other. Allegan and Boyne City. Don't you, don't you have to be involved? No. They can take it off their books. They don't have to tell us. I want to talk so. to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, there's other consequences through, for, uh, for, like, through us now that they've done that, but the city council can vote to remove the ordinance, and it's just gone. <laughs> there's not much we can do about it, so... Don't talk, um, don't but yes, we can talk later. Yeah. You, don't, um, you don't have to appoint a study committee. <laughs> no, no, they didn't. They just. No, they just. Yep. Ooh, sure. um, so just understand that we are. We are finally have the ship. Shipo. We finally have some kind of forward momentum, um, and we hope that that will help kind of the public perception of local districts across the state as we have as we are able to kind of build that back up. So. So there's nothing legal about the three requirements for the historic district act. For the the recommendations, or which? No, no. What do you mean? In the uh, historic district act, yeah. There are three things that justify a historic district, and as long as you keep those three, you have a historic district, and we have all three. So we have a, a, a legally legally we have a historic district. Correct. But they can just take, take it away I anyway. mean, the city council, yeah, in, the, in those two cases, the city, city council, council completely did. revoked their ordinances, I took them know, completely off the books. Why do you gone. have a, a state appeals board then? No oh, one give anyone ideas. Yeah. Right, I know. No, but why do you have a state appeals <laughs> board if there's no appeals? Because there's no, there's, there's nothing to, to appeal now. There's no districts. There's nothing there in those two communities now. So just, just as a, that's background that for where the, the state is at at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that some more. It's a good comment. I think that for the moment, uh, they're not discussing that upstairs at City Council this week. So, Don't tell them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are definitely people paying attention to this meeting right now, but but they're all on our side, um, I'm sure. So we're good. Uh, to, to just discuss your question, um, if there is... If there's a report out there that is great about, um, you know, the the an ed, uh, that we can use as advocacy that, that shows um, the value of a historic district or something, send that in. We we keep Jill and her team keeps a, a website. Um, the website's pretty good. It, we're always trying to make it better, um, but it has places with links that that. You know, if you have that information, and that's easy enough to, to add. Um, yeah, if to any our... other communities have done something like that, and by value, I, I think we mean intrinsic value as well, not just it raises your Absolutely. property value, um, which in some ways is a double-edged sword because then people say, well, it's no longer affordable because it's in a historic district because it raises the value too much. It's like, ah. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we have hearings every month that people are improving their homes, our businesses, and you know, people uh, want to move to these districts. Uh, that's just showing that they are valuable. I, you know, that's not advocacy, but it is just you know uh, something positive that that we're all happy about. So when this district was established. There were Democratic Socialists on city council who were very opposed to it because it was going to lead 
to gentrification. And, and um, this wasn't a, a district that had a lot of home ownership. So it wasn't going to be that kind of gentrification, but we couldn't uh, disabuse them of this idea. So that was why they were against it for other areas that did have home ownership. Mm. There were, I think, two Democratic Socialists on council at the time. Very Anybody remember them? <laughs> Peterson, something Peterson. Lowell Peterson. Lowell Peterson. Lowell Peterson. Lowell Peterson. Yeah. Larry <laughs> and Larry Hunter. David, I just want to mentioned to the rest of the historic district people here. This is what happens when the neighborhood comes in. <laughs> we're, we're so happy to have you. Usually uh, we're we don't have this we, we have a lot wonderful discussion. And um, anyway, thank you so much, Sarah. We thank really you. appreciate oh. uh, the presentation. And Katie, thank you for being here because you were very helpful to answer all those uh, follow-up yeah, questions we had. So we really much. appreciate it. Okay. Um, that was great discussion. Thank you all. Um, well, before you go, where, and, and Jill can maybe answer. Okay, we want to know where can we find the you know, It's going to be done when we all want to see it. When it's yeah. done, where I'm can we find it? I'm going to let you all know. Jill, okay. you're, you're going to let us know. Email. Hold gonna, tight, you will know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to send Chris and Jeff an email, and they're going to send it out to the old fourth warders. Oh, yeah. Great. Send the commissioners an email. Great. Um, and it it'll be on the, it'll be on the website. It'll be on the front page of the website. How long is the report? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's large enough that my computer is struggling to open. Yeah, it's, oh, wow. it's bigger than a um, wow. one-inch binder yeah, clip. It's, it's, it's all like twice. Twice. <laughs> 400 pages of forms. Yeah, yeah. plus 230-ish pages of report. So yeah. Yeah. I just sent you a place economics link. So it's got the thud fact. <laughs> 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 we put it on the, our, the conference table. You That's important. You have like a hundred more buildings than the original survey. Well, we didn't find them, but that just wasn't a... A detailed oh, survey. They they kind of chose what buildings they they included in the report. I, I think that was fairly common in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. They they had fairly limited funding, so they would just kind of oh, pick and choose really? the prettiest buildings. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so a lot of the early now, even the National Register nominations, will only look at like 10 of the 50 buildings in a district, which leaves every other building kind of as a mystery yeah. <laughs> to those that are trying to read it now. So we're doing a lot of these projects in other communities where we are going back and resurveying things that haven't been looked at since the 70s and 80s, well, um, yeah, and then that, even that's, nominations. That's too. kind of happened with the Old West Side yeah. that came before us. But when we went to do the Old Fourth Ward, historic district, the city attorney said, you have to document every building. And that fell to me. Yeah. That's how I got into this racket. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, great. Thanks, thank Sarah. You. Appreciate it. Thank you, Katie. That was great work. That's why we came. Okay. So we're going to wrap that up and move on. Um, there is no other new business. And next is approval of minutes, although we cannot do that. Um, so we'll do that next month. We'll get July and August. Are there any uh, reports from commissioners? We're on I right now. Very good. Um, seeing none, we'll move on to assignments for the review committee. And um, we all decided that whoever's not here is going to get put on the review committee for next month, unless you want to. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so because of this special meeting, we'll do that. Um, report from staff? Um, I've got nothing prepared. Okay. That's okay. Mariana, anything? Nothing here. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Are there any concerns of commissioners at the moment? None. Do we have any communications this month? We do not. No. Okay. So then uh, we will adjourn the Historic District Commission meeting for August 8th, 2024 at 7.54 p.m. <laughs>